In the last episode, we headed out deep into the Sonoran Desert of Arizona in search of dark skies. My friend Tony and I are planning on doing some camping in a dark sky area so we could take full advantage of Tony's telescope. Well, I did my best to capture images of the stars, but today it's Tony's turn to show you what his gear can do. Got here, bud. All right, so this is my this is my full setup. The mount is like the is the most important part. Um, it's what tracks the night sky with Earth with Earth's rotation. Um, so you need a really good mount to be able to do that properly, and it goes vice versa. That is sick. Um, but so this is a sky a Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro. It is a beginner. It's a cheap beginner entry level that mount. It does not look cheap. Um, <laughs> yeah, actual photography is nothing but expensive. Uh, but for something like this, you want to spend good money on. Um, sitting on top of it is the Skywatch 130 PDS. It has a uh, diameter of 130 millimeters, which translates to 650 millimeter focal length. Um, on uh, using it, I have a uh, autofocuser. Uh, which allows me to, on my computer, I can autofocus it and do all of it without having to worry about focusing it at all. Um, I have the an ASI 1600mm uh, MM Pro. It is a uh, dedicated a cooled astrophotography camera with the L LRGB filter wheel. Because um, it does shoot in mono. Uh, so I need the filters to do colored images. Okay. Um, on the other side right here, if you want to come over here. I have a little uh, 50 millimeter guide scope and a uh, ASI 120 mil, uh, mm uh, super, uh, small super speed camera. And um, this allows me to guide. Mm -hmm. So instead of it just tracking it by normal, it looks at the night sky, the stars, mm -hmm. and then it selects the star and it tracks that. So if that oh, cool. star moves, it'll send a pulse guide to command to the mount and it'll move with that star. Very cool. So I can get accurate, I can get 10 minute, 15 minute subs without mm -hmm. any star, tra star trailing. Very cool. Um, and then I have... Yeah, look at this mess down here. Yeah, a big mess of cables, um, which can't really do much about yet. Uh -huh. I am working on getting a, a small power... Uh, uh, it's a Pegasus Powerbox Advance, mm -hmm. which I'll mount it up on the scope, which allow me to plug all the cables directly into that and having one cable run down to my power, rather than having all of this cool um so that's what i'm imaging t with tonight sweet um can't wait to see what happens yeah i'm excited hopefully i mean we have till midnight 1 a.m for clear skies mm -hmm. you know um yeah. and then depending on that depending on how cloudy it is i might switch to the moon and just shoot the moon for the rest of the night okay and do that but that's the right. plan at least <laughs> so my plan is to shoot the galaxy and then go to bed he's staying up all night yeah i'm staying up for most of the night once I get it working and knows it working, then I'll go in and let it just do its thing all night. Are but, you serious? Yeah. Well, that's crazy. Yep. Cool. All right. Let's see what happens. Dinner is served. I hope it's ready. You'll see. All right. One or more errors occurred. occurred. What's wrong? It says one or more errors occurred. Okay. So you got a little debugging to do, buddy. I don't know. You gonna get this telescope working? Yeah, I just don't know what error. Mm. Mm. Because my, I'm not cool. That's very good. I'm sorry, what? It just says one or more errors. Oh, I think I know that. I think I know why. Uh, All right, you gotta shade this. Hang on. Imaging. Yeah. The dude seriously has a big screen out here too. So if you're wondering how we're powering this deal. He's got a Jackery down on the ground. That's doing your CPU, right? That's, yeah, that's in the computer and set up. Okay. And then you can hear my Jeep running in the background. Uh, the Jeep is powering the monitor right now. So essentially, it's a giant portable generator. Hmm. Speed stew's not bad. No. Mm. What? There's lights way on the horizon. Oh, that's the interstate. What's those blinky lights? Oh, that must be... What, way off in the distance? Yeah, way off. I was like, I just kind of looked at your telescope and I'm like, wait, what? The, what is that? Yeah. There's, some, yeah. there's something else out here. What if we could see the UFOs tonight? Yeah. It's... 
dark. It's dark. Not dark enough. I still see blue in the sky. Yep. We'll bring out the uh, long exposures here in a little bit. Okay. So what, what are you doing here now? So right now I'm trying to get to focus because right now it's out of focus. That's, this is this what you're seeing. I don't know how I'll well pick it up. Um, but I'm seeing, basically I'm seeing the primary and secondary objective mirror okay. within the telescope. So, um, so I'm taking, I'm looping five second exposures right now. While I'm just to pin them down in the stars so again? you have to pin them down. Okay. So as I'm going through, it will, I can see them start coming into shape. Okay. And I'm just doing that until I can actually see something. Right. And then I'll be able to slew it to see whatever we want. Awesome. Yeah. Um, but one of the things is, is once this is dialed in, if we actually want to see observe, uh -huh. uh, we want to leave this and go on the other side of it, because uh -huh. this is messing up with our night vision. Oh yeah, definitely. So once well, well, we'll go to red light here after yeah, we get everything. Once we get red light, and then we'll be able to see because I I can actually um, somehow on this. I'm just waiting for a coyote to jump in front of the jeep so Yeah, that would be cool. No, it'll be freaky. Uh. So far we haven't heard any burrows or any coyotes out here, which is really disappointing. Yeah. But eventually, who knows, we'll see. Oh, so you just switched it to I red I just switched speed. it to red mode, yeah, so it'll be a little bit easier on our eyes. Very cool. All right. So right now you can see a lot more. So as I find, do refine it in, you can actually start to see stars and stuff. Yeah, it's getting closer. Yep. And we're just about... Every time I hear your focus move, it freaks me out. I think there's an animal up there. <laughs> All right, so, just so you know, I've seen more UFOs since I've moved to Arizona than I have in my entire life. Yeah. Because of our skies. So I just want to let you know, if we get abducted tonight, you're the one getting the anal probe, not me. Uh, I, I didn't have an anal probe! <laughs> I mean, it sounds fun and all, but... Pass. I'll pass for now. Mm. Maybe in the future. Yeah. I don't see any UFOs out here yet tonight, but you just don't know when you're out here. I'm not kidding you. I've seen some strange stuff in the skies out yeah. here. Alright, take a look at this. I know how well you guys can see this. This isn't processed yet, but look at that nebula. That's the flame nebula right here. And then this is the horse head nebula. It's a oh my it's gosh, a yes, it's a dark it. it's a dark nebula. That is insane. And that's uh, Altenac, or however you pronounce it. That is insane. <laughs> I'm being put to shame right now. <laughs> yeah. That is insane. That's pretty And it's amazing. insanely cold. <sighs> Tony stayed out most of the night, jumping into the tent on occasion to warm up. I'll let his work speak for itself. So the next morning was a very early AM departure. Truth be told, I have family in town. I need to get home and give them a tour of Arizona. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time.